Hey guys, Rob here at 3D Printscape. Today I'm going to show you how to replace the hot end on your 3D printer with an all metal replacement. Uh, I've got the Micro Swiss one right here. Uh, it's what I picked up for my Ender 3. Uh, this will work with pretty much all of the Creality printers plus a couple other ones and I'll link to it in the description below. Um, one thing I did want to point out is this is not exactly the cheapest upgrade. Uh, so if you're just printing uh, PLA, I wouldn't necessarily recommend it unless you're to the point where something happened with your hot end and you're looking to replace it anyway or you're looking to get a hardened steel uh, nozzle or something along those lines. Uh, I think this was comparable to the price of like the BL Touch or the SKR. It's like 60 bucks, I think. Don't quote me on that. Um, you might be able to catch it on sale though. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about who this upgrade is for. This upgrade is really geared towards anyone looking to uh, print with different types of filaments. So if you're looking for more of the exotic filaments or some of the um, flexible filaments, um, then this upgrade would be worthwhile for you. If you're only gonna be printing with PLA, it might not be the best investment. Uh, so it's just really, what are you gonna be doing? Do you want the option to print with more? Or are you just really looking to just stick with the PLA? If you're looking to just stick with PLA, I would probably just stick with the stock one, like I mentioned earlier, unless there's a reason to replace it. Um, this upgrade will also work if you're planning on switching your uh, boat and drive out with a direct drive system, which I plan on doing. I should have that video out within the next couple weeks or so. All right, so now let's talk about why this is good for exotic filaments. Uh, with your stock hot end, uh, you have issues really going above 240, 250, uh, and then a lot of the exotic filaments, you do have to print much hotter, and then um, you also have issues potentially with uh, some of the flexible filaments if you're trying to run the Bowden system, which uh, that can be switched out by just switching over um, the stock system to a direct drive without switching out the hot end. But if you're going to be doing all of that anyways, I would recommend just adding the hot end in there as part of the upgrade. The all metal hot end can keep a more consistent temperature. And like I mentioned earlier, it can also uh, prevent some of the issues you have with the stock hot end. Uh, where the tube kind of gets stuck in there or gets or melts towards the bottom of the nozzle and then filament gets stuck in there. I've had that happen a couple times and really I ended up having to take apart the entire hot end to clean it out. It's kind of a mess. All right, so let's go ahead and jump over to the install part. Uh, if you have any questions during the process, go ahead and leave a comment below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. And if you guys haven't already, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe. Thanks. All right, guys, let's go ahead and open up the box and take a look to see what's in it. You've got the QR code. Uh, you've got a hardened nozzle, uh, which is a nice upgrade. We have all of the tools here that we're gonna need. Uh, then we have the heat sink and the actual heating block here, and then the uh, rubber bottom. So let's go ahead and set this off to the side and get started here. Right, so let's go ahead and take everything out of the bags. Uh, make sure when you're doing this that you don't lose anything. Now that we have everything out of the bags, I wanted to show you this. If you take a close look, you can see that uh, the actual tubing will just connect straight right up here instead of having to go all the way through, um, which I'll show you here in a second once we get the other one off. With the stock hot end, the tubing is pretty much going all the way through here and then stopping right around the heat block where your nozzle goes in. So basically it's gonna be your nozzle into the heating block here and then the tube is sitting right on top of it. So if there's any gaps there, um, it's gonna end up causing a filament to stick there. And then that's gonna cause issues with the print because the filament's gonna uh, pretty much have additional resistance uh, when coming out of the nozzle. Sometimes it will cause complete clogs as well. I've seen that happen. All right, so let's go ahead and set this stuff off to the side here for a second and then take the printer apart and get the stock hot end off. And then we can go ahead and assemble everything. So All right, so the first thing we wanna go ahead and do is take off your fan duct cover or just the housing for your fans if you're still using the stock one. Uh, it doesn't matter which one you have here, we just gotta take it off. So for this one, it's gonna be the two screws here and I believe the stock one is pretty much set up the same way. All right, with those two screws out, we can go ahead and pull off the casing. Uh, be careful not to pull too much on the heating element and then set it off to the side. 
And then now we want to go ahead and take this tubing out and then we can go ahead and disconnect the screws here. So if you push down on this, we can go ahead and take the tubing out. If you have the little blue clip that goes here, you'll want to take that out first. Alright, and then once you have the tubing out, just go ahead and move it off to the side here. And then we can go ahead and disconnect this. Just go ahead and take this uh, rubber piece off first. And if you don't have enough space to work here, I'm going to change this camera angle a little bit. All right, if you don't have enough space here to work, go ahead and just raise your axis a little bit just so we can get in there. All right, now we want to go ahead and take these two screws out so we can take the block off. All right, now that that's off, we want to go ahead and loosen up this little black screw here so we can pull out the heating element and then uh, take off this screw right here so we can get to the uh, thermistor. Now, like I mentioned, you want to be careful working with these wires because if you end up pulling the cable out of either one of those, it's going to be a disaster. Then we can go ahead and just slide this right out. All right, guys, I went ahead and took apart the stock uh, hot end here just to show you a couple things. So here we have the heat block and then obviously the nozzle is attached here. And then we have this long tube that comes off of it. And that kind of just slides into uh, this part. And what happens here is the entire tube on the Bowden drive goes through here all the way down into that, basically to right here. And that leaves a, a lot of room for uh, issues to happen. Where with this system, uh, if you could look here, you've got um, the filament coming straight through this part. And then we have this adapter piece here that just slides right in here. So you don't have the tube going through the entire thing. Uh, it basically just stops up here. All right, so I grabbed a little piece of tube here that I have connected to my smart sensor, uh, just to use as an example. If we were to push this through the stock hot end, uh, it goes all the way through, and then it starts to come out this side. Now I've got to get this back apart. Where if we were to do the same thing with the new one, it only goes in uh, basically that far. So let's go ahead and assemble uh, the new hot end, then we'll get it connected. All right, first thing we're going to want to do is connect uh, this adapter piece to the hot end. All right, so we're going to want to go and make sure that these screws here are at the bottom and then go ahead and screw this piece in. And we want to go ahead and tighten this as much as we can. And then once that's in place and tightened, uh, we'll go ahead and grab the little wrench that came with the kit and just tighten it a little bit more. All right, once that's in, we can go ahead and put the nozzle in. Uh, I wanted to make a note that this is a hardened steel nozzle, so it is a good upgrade from the standard brass or copper one. And we're just going to tighten this um, really just by hand until we get to the point where we can actually have all of it attached. Then we'll heat it up to probably 260, 270, and then we'll actually do the final tightening on it. All right, now that this is in place, we can go ahead and attach um, the other part to it. So we'll go ahead and just slide this in, and then we need to get uh, one of these little black screws that came with the kit here and put it in the hole there and tighten it down so that's going to hold everything in place. Alright, and then I'm using um, my countertop here to keep the bottom flat so that we don't have any issues with it kind of being turned. I would recommend using a hard surface and sometimes these screws are a little bit hard to work with, so if you're fighting to get them in, uh, you can take apart, uh, take this piece back out and then put it in, then slide it back together like what I just did. All right, now that that's together, let's go ahead and uh, attach the heating element and thermistor to it. All right, I went ahead and changed the angle on the camera so we can take a look at this. Uh, for this step, we're going to need this screw that has the additional backing or the washer kind of built into it, our Phillips screwdriver. Um, and then the two screws that'll hold the heating block in place. All right, so the first thing we want to go ahead and do here is uh, align this so that we can um, slide our heating element and thermistor into the correct spots. So we'll just go ahead and slide this in. And same here, uh, this goes through the bottom hole there. And then we'll put the screw in right up top here to hold this in place. Uh, then we'll go ahead and just hand tighten this 
uh, just to kind of hold it while we um, put in the heating element. Uh, so now that that's kind of hand tightened, we'll push the heating element through a little bit further, again being very careful when working with this, and then tighten down these two screws at the bottom so that the heating element's in place. All right, so now that these are tightened up, let's go ahead and tighten up uh, this other screw here. Uh, I like this kit because it's pretty much a direct drop-in replacement from the stock hot end. All right, now that that's in place, we can go ahead and screw this in. It's gonna connect uh, the two spots that were here. Like I said, it's a direct drop-in replacement, so we'll just use these screws. Uh, I like to start them off just a little bit loose, just so I can get the alignment, then I'll go and tighten them up. All right, now that that's in place, we go and put a tube in. I want to make a note here that you can um, cut the tube down a little bit, but if you do, make sure that you're cutting it so that you're not crimping into the tube to cause any type of dents. Or you can also upgrade the tubing as well if you want to. Um, I'm going to leave this as is right now because, like I mentioned earlier in the video, I plan on swapping this out with a direct drive system, so I'll be trimming up all the tubing and stuff at that point. So now that the tube's in place here, we'll go ahead and take one of our stoppers and slide it underneath here so that it locks the tube in place. All right guys, now that that part's done, uh, we'll go ahead and turn on the printer and preheat it to uh, 270 so that we can go ahead and tighten up our nozzle. All right guys, now that that's up to temperature, we're gonna wanna go ahead and uh, tighten our nozzle here. So I'm gonna go ahead and use the uh, wrench that came with the kit just to hold this top piece in and then a um, seven millimeter, I think, or a quarter inch uh, to turn the nozzle. All right, now that that's tight, we can go ahead and turn that uh, back off so it'll cool down. And again, when working with that, be very careful. Uh, obviously, it is very hot. Uh, I touched the wrench afterwards and it almost burnt my finger, so just be careful. All right, once that's cooled down enough, we want to go ahead and put on our rubber piece here. Again, make sure it's cooled down or be very careful. And then we can go ahead and put on our fan duct cover. Um, when you're putting this on, be very careful to not hit any of the cables or not knock them around too much unless you might have issues. All right guys, now that it's all back together, let's go ahead and feed the filament through and then kick off a quick print, just to make sure everything's working as expected. So I'm gonna go ahead and heat the nozzle back up to about uh, 190 or so. <clears throat> then once it gets to the temperature, I'm gonna go ahead and feed some of the filament through just to get it primed and then we'll kick off the print. All right, so next, uh, because we did adjust the height of the nozzle and everything, we do need to make sure that we account for that with our Z offset. So I'm gonna go ahead and run through that process again really quick. All right, so we wanna go to uh, menu, uh, extrude, um, sorry, movement, uh, ABL, and then Z offset. and then uh, go ahead and hit uh, on. So that's gonna go ahead and home it so we can set our Z offset. All right, with the setting I had before, I can't even get the card stock under it. So I'm just gonna go ahead and bring it up. We were at one, negative 1.05. All right, I think that's pretty good. We went from negative uh, 1.05 to positive 0.015. So that's a pretty big change. Um, most of that's to account for the difference in the nozzles. Right, so let me go back and then we'll kick off our print now.
All right guys, so that was a process to upgrade the hot end on your 3D printer. Uh, it's pretty much similar to just taking apart the hot end to clean it out or to clear out a jam or whatever the case may be. Um, but there was a couple extra steps uh, because we had to adjust the Z offset and things like that uh, just to account for the additional height on the nozzle. Um, but overall the process was pretty easy and I think it was a definitely a worthwhile upgrade. If you have any questions on the process or like any additional information or any other videos, go ahead and leave a comment below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Thanks.